Hello everyone, uh, Eric Chappell, Community Evangelist for InfraWorks 360, and I want to welcome everyone here today for our, our webcast. Um, the thought just crossed my mind that since we started this webcast series, this is now our third What's New uh, webcast. So it's really exciting that we've got a product and a product team that gives us such a steady flow of new features. Uh, it it's really makes life interesting if you're a user of the product. So um, for those of you who haven't been here before, I want to welcome you to our webcast series. We've been doing this twice a month since, I think, April. And uh, we've been hitting the first and third Wednesdays of the month. And our goal is, is really that bottom bullet point. We want to bring you guys, the InfraWorks 360 users, and our product team, the makers of the software, closer together. And the best way to do that is to give you information about the product from the perspective of the product team. So that's what you're going to hear today. You're going to be hearing from Chakri about uh, what's what's coming in this new release that's uh, scheduled to, to be available today. And uh, we've got other uh, product team members on the line as well that can answer questions and such. Um, I do want to talk about what's coming next on the, on the 16th of September. Um, one of the one of the uh, amazing new features that Chopper is going to be talking about, I'm sure, is traffic simulation. And because this is such a, a big feature and there's a lot to know about it, we thought it would be a good idea to have a special session where it's almost like a one-hour training session to get you up and running with this feature. And that's going to happen on uh, in two weeks. It'll be uh, led by our own Gordon Duncan, who is kind of the, the brains behind traffic simulation. And he's going to give you uh, the information you need to get started with this feature. And we're even um, talking about including some handouts and, and making some data sets available so that maybe you can share this internally with the other members of your team and, and make it into kind of a train the trainer experience. So a slightly different flavor to our next webcast. It's a little bit more of a training session than, uh, than an informational session. And I think that's, uh, that's pretty cool. I want to launch a quick poll. And if you're a, a veteran of our webcast series, you've seen this poll before. And we want to know what your usage level is of InfraWorks 360. So I'm going to launch that poll now. And please make your choice as to um, what your usage level is, ranging from I don't even have it installed until uh, up to I use it on almost every project. And I'm kind of seeing the results in real time here. About half of you have voted. and we're seeing a big spike uh, on on the fourth option. I regularly use it on some projects, so that's uh, that's promising. I think that's a definite shift uh, in in that direction than what we've seen before. I also want to point out that um, this this webcast today we just broke a record for registration, so we're definitely gaining momentum with this webcast. We broke a, a record two weeks ago with Wes's scripting webcast, and we broke it again today. So. That's exciting as well. We're definitely uh, seeing a movement afoot with uh, the InfraWorks 360 user community. So it's exciting that um, we're involved in that at such a such an early stage. So I'm going to close that poll. And uh, thanks to everyone who voted and gave us some feedback. And by the way, the winning the winning option was the fourth one. I regularly use it on some projects. So good to see that. I want to talk to you about our community and some of the resources that are out there available. The main hub for anything community is the, the URL you see at the top of the screen, autodesk.com slash infraworks360community. And here you'll find uh, tabs and pages and links and streams to our forum where users, uh, other users and our product team and other members of Autodesk uh, talk about maybe issues that they're having and solutions to those issues and just all kinds of uh, information to help help keep you going with InfraWorks. We've got our idea station, so if you've got an idea about how you think the software can be improved, that's where you get your chance to do that in with the audience of other users as well as the product team and other Autodesk employees. We've got our Infra Tips, which is brand new. It's a, it's a, it's a page containing quick tips that can make you more productive or, or um, give you ideas about features in the software that you maybe didn't know about. In fact, I just posted one this morning about a feature that's in this brand new release. Uh, we've got our gallery where users like you can post images and videos of InfraWorks 360 projects that, that they're working on or that they have done. 
And that's really cool to go up and see what other users are up to because the user community can come up with crazy stuff that we can, we'd can we never even think of. I've seen roller coasters on there. I've seen simulations of marathons and just anything you can imagine is up there uh, for you to take a look at. We've got our social hub where you'll see streams from uh, Twitter and Facebook as well as a number of different blogs. You can also go up there and find videos. Um, there's a pretty good video on um, kind of a rundown of the, all the new features or not, let's say not all the new features, but the important new features in this release. Uh, it only takes you about 10 minutes to watch that one. And then uh, any, any previous webcasts, uh, we've recorded them, including this one, and they are posted up on the community site as well. And just a quick, this is one of the features of the community site. This is a stream of the forum, the idea station, and InfraTips kind of all in one panel. You can visit this at any point and you'll get kind of the latest uh, activity in all of those areas and just at a glance. And then you can click on, on the links to go deeper if you see something that's interesting to you. A little bit of a disclaimer. Um, we may talk about preview features during this webcast, and we want to be very clear that preview features are in no way a promise that those features will actually exist in an, in an upcoming version of the software. Preview features are for the sole purpose of having you try them out and give us feedback and uh, so that we can make decisions about those features. But again, no guarantee that they will, uh, will occur or exist in a future, in a future release. We want to invite you to ask lots of questions. Because of the size of our group, we can't open the line for audio questions, but there is a questions um, section on your GoToWebinar interface, and we encourage you to type your questions in there. The more questions we have, the better. We will stop at different points along the way, uh, probably, to answer some of those questions, and then uh, we'll probably have a little time at the end as well to, to answer some of those. And then if we don't get to all of them, we will uh, follow up later on. So please don't hold back. The more questions, the better. It just makes the presentation that much more interesting. So with that, I'm going to turn the controls over to Chakri. And he's going to take it away from here. It's all yours, Chakri. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, <clears throat> thanks, Eric. And uh, you know, along, I'm Chakri Gavini, senior product manager at Autodesk, uh, primarily working on Infowars 360. And along with me, I have Nick Zeevan, uh, my colleague, who is also a transportation product manager working at uh, Infowars 360. Uh, we'll go through uh, you know the key features, but I want to emphasize the key aspect of what we are doing, why we are doing Infowars for. Uh, it is, uh, you know, just to drive the message, it is, you know, it's a tool that we want to, live, you know, be seen for providing real-world context and be able to, users be able to design in context their engineering decisions so that they can take decisions sooner and uh, earlier uh, and reducing the project delivery. And also, you know, while doing so, you know, uh, through the support of the analytics-driven design, uh, users should be able to do design alternatives explore earlier on and uh, therefore make informed decisions and uh, finally you know, increase the project understanding among the stakeholders and uh, accelerate approvals. So that's our, uh, our mantra moving forward, you know, like as, as we are proceeding with this and we are and continue to focus on this. And uh, with that uh, as a background, you know, the key three themes that we have this, uh, you know, to the, this uh, new release of Infowars 360 are again, once again, uh, focusing on the performance improvements in the product, across the product and solution group, and uh, improving the analytics-driven parametric civil, civil infrastructure model, particularly in uh, roads and, uh, and the bridge, uh, bridge uh, aspects of the design area. And of course, to uh, push our compelling web, uh, web experience uh, that we have started uh, uh, three months back and, and take it to the next level. So these are the key three themes that we have this year that I'm going to touch. So first and foremost, for those of you who have Infowars 360 only entitlement, you know, like I'll touch on what's the key thing that has been changed. And a uh, uh, very new thing that we haven't even talked in the past or in any other forums is that the a new feature 
uh, is experimented now that's uh, for read only U users now should be able to publish read only model so the intention of this read only model is to be able to uh, you know if you are author of a model and you don't you want to share this particular model with your colleagues who may or may not have all entitlements and you can publish this as a read only model and anyone who has uh, Infrax 360, not necessarily any vertical modules, they will be able to access this model and see it. And at the same time, if you don't want it, so obviously like any other read-only documents, uh, the intention to publish this is you want to share with them, but you don't want them to be editing it. So you're actually, even if they have entitlements for roadway design and you published a new road design, the, you, the readers will not be able to modify the model and uh, now, however, they can do any analytics and query of the model uh, is possible to be done. So we have a long, uh, a, a lot of uh, uh, feature sets going, moving forward for this read-only model, and we appreciate you know through your comments or questions, your feedback on this, uh, um, you know, very well. well. I appreciated that. The second uh, uh, feature that's uh, a conceptual road and rail improvements that we introduced a three months back, uh, style you know like uh, style custom based uh, profiles, uh, expanding that uh, conceptual road and rail styles have taken the uh, the custom profiles have been leveraged to create more complicated uh, uh, tra transportation systems such as. Uh, you know, you can now create, instead of overloading your styles, you can use those uh, custom profiles to create various types of, uh, tra you know, uh, structural transitions between the, you know, upgrade uh, transportation, whether it is a road or rail, and going to the underground, and also meeting two, you know, if you want to meet two rails, rails coming together kind of thing. So the, the same custom profile technique that we taught three months back is now expanded and you can experiment with more complicated cases uh, to create uh, more realistic representations of conceptual roads and rails. In addition to that, uh, we also have improved overall performance for conceptual rails and uh, for both roads and rail, we have, uh, you know, an, uh, conceptual roads and rails, we have transition controls introduced in the new release of Infrox 360 that I'm going to show in the next uh, few slides. So, so here is the slide that explains actually, you know, like how you can control uh, uh, transitions for the conceptual roads and rails. So in the past, you know that the transitions between the two styles Chakri, while you're working on that, I wanted to provide some additional explanation about the read-only, um, the read-only yeah, feature. So going back one feature, and Nick, if I get this wrong, please chime in and let me know. But um, when you when you set up groups in InfraWorks 360, the roles haven't changed. There's still a reader uh, permission as well as uh, an editor and and I believe one other. So now when you when you invite someone to a group and you make them a reader, they'll still be able to access models in that group like they always have, but they won't be able to actually edit the local version of the model. Previously, if you were a reader in a group, you could still download a model, make changes, make a copy, and republish it in any form you wanted. But now, if you're a reader in a group and you, and you download one of those models in that group, you can't change it, even locally. So that's the, um, that was just recently explained to me, actually, and I wanted to pass that along. So did I get that right, Nick? Sorry, the mute, unmute button doesn't work on my headset. Uh, yeah, that that's the uh, that's the understanding uh, that that I have as well. So I think we're we're correct as far as we know. Okay, yeah. good. Chakra, you ready to go? Okay. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Good. So this is a real problem with my Apple book. Um, so here is a video that shows actually the transition. In the past, you know that the transition. Uh, is uh, limited to 20 meters kind of thing and now there is a, uh, there is an improvement and enhancement done uh, uh, for the conceptual uh, roads and rails uh, just uh, I'm emphasizing that because this functionality is not yet in the design roads and uh, having said that you know uh, you know you can expect uh, you know where we are heading towards uh, 
so here is the you know the by default it is actually going to have a best fit uh, possibility as you saw in the UI just a few and then you can actually override it and you can control what is the transition in and what's the transition out uh, along with that uh, this video doesn't show you know like there are some improvements done for the conceptual roads and rails uh, particularly conceptual roads the median transitions also uh, instead of pointed in or see things kind of thing you know like you can make uh, uh, you know make it uh, look more uh, nicer and uh, realistic uh, uh, transitions for the abruptions for the uh, medians so that's uh, uh, that's the uh, key feature around it in the transition styles and uh, the second one is in the conceptual rails uh, you can now com uh, combine so you can now combine rail tracks uh, so in the, in the uh, rail tracks to form as a group so that uh, you can actually leverage this for uh, for tracks that are coming in and out of uh, out of tunnels or bridge structures kind of thing so typically if you you may have two rail tracks that are designed with two different center lines that are coming in and coming together and to share the tracks onto a bridge structure for example in the past you know you would have to uh, you are forced to have two structures now you know without having to have a complicated uh, rail styles defined you can actually leverage this particular method to group two rails so that they come and merge together. So that's um, a simplification of the rail, uh, rail style combination and transition functionality on the conceptual rails. Now I'm transitioning to uh, design functionalities, improvements to the roadway design for Introvox 360 in the latest design. First and foremost, it is uh, you know like we have emphasized on improved performance and uh, conversion decorations, and uh, some of these things are in the preview features, and uh, I'll touch on which one is a preview feature. And overall, we have improved the performance to create and edit roads and larger models, uh, both in uh, you know like editing on plan or on in model as well as in the uh, profile geom geometry manipulation performance. So this, some of these problems have been mentioned by some uh, few of you and uh, our customers, and uh, you know we followed that up and uh, and enhanced significantly uh, the processes that's required to improve the performance there. And at the same time, there is an improvement in the uh, uh, GIS road conversion into the design road conversion, uh, so that you know, like the users can leverage various uh, design road-based functionality, is is a significant improvement done. And uh, decorations, which uh, in road compo component roads, which is a which is a preview technology, uh, are now you know like replaced, uh, very similar to. Uh, you know how you are using the components. So, so some of you who are on on the beta portals or sandbox might have seen this, and uh, and uh, you know like uh, this is a continuously evolving experience with uh, uh, how you are going to how you are placing the uh, decorations and how you know and uh, with a simplified process. Uh, on the style based roads, you still you know that you know they are going to they are part of the style definition, but here. You know the experience has significantly changed to uh, uh, to match what you expect, uh, like a component road. And the the next one is a traffic simulation, traffic analysis. It was a preview feature in the past, and now it is uh, you know like a full fledged uh, uh, feature that's uh, that's a meter feature that is uh, 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 that is uh, available for purchase. And uh, the key changes uh, into traffic analysis, uh, traffic analysis uh, module uh, service, are that now this traffic analysis supports roundabouts, and also there are significant changes and improvements happened for intersection design, and those uh, intersection design uh, ch uh, changes. For example, here uh, I'm mentioning it as an internal traffic zone, so, which means if you have two adjacent. Uh, uh, in the intersections, the the link in between is a too sharp to be calling it as a specific road, but at the same time it needs to be handled uh, for uh, traffic analysis and see the impact of those kind of internal traffic zones. So those that particular enhancement is done 
and the traffic analysis now can be done interactively you know like uh, as the design changes you can see the impact instantly and uh, see you know before and after you know our various alternatives can be analyzed and you can see at the end uh, bottom here you know you need to have a roadway design subscription to use this traffic simulation uh, that's a prerequisite and uh, and the charge is, uh, you know, if you are analyzing a, a square kilometer of uh, uh, area, you know, you will be charged one cloud credit for one hour simulation work. Uh, <clears throat> so that's the model there. And uh, so here is an example video, and uh, you know, and I'm going to give another video uh, if we have time uh, to give a scoop of what if analysis uh, and. Uh, so you are running uh, using the roadway design analysis panel the traffic simulation and uh, there is a new uh, you know parking lot access is proposed and if you do that and you know you are going to simulate the traffic without the parking garage first and then you run the same you know like uh, uh, area uh, add a new access to the parking garage and run and you can see the delta how it is uh, uh, adding traffic to that particular, uh, you know, because of adding traffic to that particular network, because of that uh, that uh, that improvement uh, to that uh, facility. So while you may be facilitating uh, users, you know, like uh, to park in the busy covered area, you are actually contributing to the uh, misery of uh, other travelers on the network. So you can therefore identify uh, our, you know, design mitigating factors how you want to you know just reduce the traffic overload in that area so you are not taking decisions in isolation and uh, and the key is you know you're getting a system level view of the design area and uh, make the better decisions and there is a another uh, video that I want to share uh, here uh, is uh, uh, you know uh, showing the similar kind of functionality uh, but then I was talking about the internal traffic zones so will be explained here so there is a t-junction we are adding a, a staggered intersection at a, at a junction uh, just adjacent to that so in uh, you know in 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 Infrared 360 latest release that particular kind of uh, junctions will be treated as uh, uh, as uh, uh, you know the in, uh, so that particular junction will be treated as as a internal link that you have there, two junctions, and this these two will be combined, and because it's a standard junction, will be seen as a single intersection for analysis, and therefore you know anything that needs to be stacked. If you are moving this on the right side thing a little ahead, that means you are going to get a small piece of road, and that road will be treated as a as an internal junction for analysis also. So, switching back to the presentation here, and so here is the you know like uh, uh, key value uh, props of the improvements for the intersection design in the latest release of two thousand you know uh, Introverse three hundred and sixty. Uh, as I explained, the staggered junctions can be modeled. In the past, staggered junctions failed and created a a default uh, aim rendering of junctions rather than a design junctions and you can also create right in and right out into intersections which are you know like more in terms of uh, 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 creating you know like driveway kind of experience or just you know like something that comes in and goes only one side of the junctions kind of thing and uh, and we mentioned left in and left out uh, for left hand side driving uh, countries and uh, the another key important is, uh, improvement is that we added lane turn arrows and uh, I just gonna show the video here that uh, I was uh, showing a bit in and in a bit more detailed manner here and you can see that uh, I'm gonna pause here you can see that the lane mark lane arrows are marked here so the lanes in, in designed roads uh, have now a new property called their turn uh, turn direction, uh, which is not only used for lane marking, but also uses for the traffic uh, uh, analysis and also intelligently identifying for the lane marking and median adjustments. Uh, that's the key. So this is going into the true BIM modeling for 
uh, roadway models. And uh, here you can see that, you know, like the, a lane, so I'm converting it into a roundabout, you can, you can come. And the same lane marking have been expanded and, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, shown. So if you remember, uh, the initial release of roundabout doesn't have any lane marking. It is only showing it when you are in, uh, in edit mode. Now you can have those lane markings uh, 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 displayed in your model. And uh, so what we just showed is uh, roundabouts in the first go, they were not, uh, you know, supporting uh, uh, any left-hand side driving directions like uh, in UK and uh, India, Australia. You know, it was only right-hand side. And uh, in the in the in the latest software, we were also doing for uh, uh, left-hand side driving too. So, having said that, uh, roundabout with its lane marking and uh, travel direction functionality both on left-hand side driving and right-hand side driving and uh, supporting the traffic simulation is a is a full-fledged uh, uh, functionality with a uh, primitive uh, uh, grip editing for the radius uh, but however you can change the standards uh, and you can update your roundabouts based on the uh, change rules and change standards. So the roundabouts uh, <coughs> Uh, are you know performance enhancements. So here is an example that is showing actually the uh, a video that is showing uh, how um, cars are uh, the traffic simulation is done yeah, and and traffic animation is done using the left hand side and this is a standard right hand side driving direction and uh, and uh, you know like also uh, based on the right hand side driving direction that you are seeing it now. And also you can see that uh, in this example and a network of roads, how the lane markings and road markings have done for the roundabouts. So the next one is uh, drainage design uh, for Infrox 360. Any questions that on road design, Nick and uh, Eric, that we should address? You know, we've got a lot of really specific uh, technical questions, um, which is which is awesome. It shows that folks are, are digging deeply into the software, but I don't think there's anything uh, that we need to air out for the whole group. So I think we're good. You can continue, Shalkri. Yeah. Okay. So the drainage design primary change is to support, to continue to expand uh, its support to the uh, preview technology of uh, component parts. Now, uh, having said that, the new enhancements to the dry payment drainage analysis this uh, this QR is to uh, put inlet spacing the which accommodates changes to the component uh, widths. In other words, you know, like if your lanes are widening or, uh, or your medians are medians are changing, and you know wherever you are putting your flow line, so the uh, automatic placement of the components will follow those widths, and also it you know it. Uh, 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 it identifies the transition zones and and uh, and they locate themselves uh, appropriately and uh, connected dynamically to the uh, to the assets. Uh, and the key there is it's not only following the widths but also uh, you know uh, slope and material and it determines actually the proper layout of uh, of the line structures that you can see here on the median. Uh, it is actually identifying the slope on one side and at the same time in the widened area it uh, found out the gutter line and uh, and uh, it located itself uh, in uh, uh, on the transitioning gutter line with uh, appropriately orienting itself uh, to the uh, to the gutter line direction there and uh, the second enhancement for the drainage analysis is uh, project border which is a introvert 360 labs project uh, continue to have some uh, new improvements. Uh, one of them is, uh, you know, like uh, outflow conditions. Uh, in, in the past, you are only looking at uh, when you are doing the analysis, you know, inflow conditions, uh, edit, editable, and uh, this one. Now, it, in the report and in your asset card for the flood sim, out outflow conditions are added, and uh, also uh, user can actually have a better triangle size control. Uh, to do, uh, you know, a detailed mesh-based model. So this is, those are the two things, but uh, besides that, it is the same thing, and we continue to have it on uh, on uh, project world of our uh, uh, Infrared 360 as a labs. Uh, so, you know, this is a video that uh, we have uh, with the previous one, and then adding to the outflow uh, details into the uh, into the analysis model. 
the key value prop is still same. You know, it provides a 2D flood simulation using our partner solution Hydrania, and uh, and uh, you know it uses infrared terrain to uh, to get the data and uh, and uploads to the Hydrania's uh, uh, cloud-based solution, and uh, it uh, creates a, a, it simulates actually time bound flood simulation and it also gives you a report of uh, you know both in terms of graphical and the thematic as well as uh, a numerical query you can do for uh, finding out the depths of the you know uh, flood depths and various key aspects of it and uh, and then uh, bridge design for infraworks 360 so the bridge design continue to have you know parametric uh, uh, modeling expansion happen and uh, in the past you know that the you know the, uh, the girders were uh, you know parametrically controlled but the piers and foundations were uh, you know limited in terms of uh, parametric uh, uh, parametric uh, uh, creation or rather editing and uh, and now in the new release of infraworks 360 uh, we have pier and foundation modeling is added uh, which is in line with what you have uh, experienced with the uh, girders. So users can also, you know, like uh, uh, users can also can select a peer. You know, parameter peers can be added, and then user can select a peer, and they can change a specific peer and make the changes to the peer. So I'll wait for the video to catch up. So you are selecting a peer, you know, a a, a peer there and you are making changes to that and uh, selected through the asset cards and making changes and you are editing the parameters of that particular uh, peer and uh, so here is what you change the peer type uh, deviating from the rest of the peers and you can make changes to that and what's good you know you can actually if you like those changes you can select that particular peer uh, peer and apply whatever changes you have done to all other uh, peers in the group uh, through the contextual way. So, <clears throat> so here is uh, you are doing apply to all the changes particular thing, all peers. So you selected and selected peers change to the you know with the modifications that you can have. So the same thing you can modify a variety of peers and peer foundation properties. And that the exact same thing can be applied even to the girders. Now you can make a girder change and you can right click on the girder, change the girder, and you can apply them to a, a set of uh, uh, girders to make the impact of, uh, you know the uh, to make that particular change uh, uh, impact all other girders. So this is the one that is uh, emphasizing uh, apply to functionality again. Uh, so you can see here, just make the changes. And so is the case with the girders. We are selecting the girders and uh, uh, make changes to the girder. Uh, one girder, and then you are selecting it. Change the girder type. So and uh, you can see the different girder there. And within that particular frame, you can select the entire span, and you can apply the changed girder to all of them there. So that's one. And like with the uh, theme of performance improvement, um, both and uh, like uh, you know across the product, uh, as I mentioned, we have roadway design performance improvements as I listed in the beginning, and uh, drainage uh, performance, and so is the case with the bridge performance improvements. Particularly in the bridge, uh, quantities and volumes are now streamlined and more optimized, and they calculate only when the quantity panel is open. So there, in the past, actually it was continuously doing, and therefore. Uh, it is drastically reducing the render time now, and it is more smooth and fine in working with the bridges now. So both quantities and volumes, their operations, uh, how we have optimized their operations, enhance the experience, enhances the experience for you to work with the, with the functionality. So, 
So in Introverts 360 Web, uh, in the last release, at the, in the uh, three months back, we introduced uh, uh, web-based uh, uh, panorama views. And the panorama-based web views are now even expanding their capabilities. And uh, one of them is, uh, is a point of interest. Uh, the point of interest you know uh, is in Introverts 360 uh, all along. Um, uh, since, uh, you know, since the uh, yeah, yeah. and uh, you know like whenever you know in the initial release now you can actually extract that particular uh, the data or, or the information that is in the panorama view uh, sorry the point of interest and you can, ex you can extract that into your web views uh, in in you know here you see that you know like you're de you're defining let's say that the image that you are seeing on the left you're, you're defining, you put a point of interest, and this particular point of interest can have uh, any kind of data. You know, it can have a YouTube link, or it can have a, an external website, or maybe, you know, just an information or, or an aspect of a different model, actually. So that information now, when you are publishing them, uh, is being carried uh, into your web views. So, so, you know, like these are the type of things, you know, you can have just a name and a picture, a name and a link and a link and a tooltip and all sorts of information you can add uh, into, your, into your point of uh, interest. And this is an example video that shows so here we are showing an Autodesk website we are connecting as a point of interest to uh, or to other point of interest property, we are adding it. So this is a tool you now that uh, you added through the tooltip there. It has a series of strip that is capturing for the tooltip. So I'm actually, you know, the pointer printers can have tooltip. I forgot to mention that. And those tooltips also can come into your web views now. So user hovers on that. You can see a tooltip that shows up, web website, address website. And you click on that, it takes you there. So it can be anything. It's just this is demonstratively we just put there. And in another instead, there is a tooltip that came uh, that shows this uh, a document. And the tooltip contained a link inside. And you can click on that link, and that link takes you to the you know in that example tender right. So this one here is a is a screencast, AutoCAD screencast. So you can act, you can show uh, to your stakeholders. Uh, you know, it directly takes a, a rendered views or images or a fly-throughs of that particular thing. And uh, and in the next example, we are showing, you know, like you can have a link and that link can take you to your RRS 360 page or any other page, your SharePoint page or your internal web page where there are models that you wanted to share to your customers. Uh, so this is, uh, this, would, this is certainly an excellent feature. Uh, if you want to use in your web and mobile to communicate your project intents and uh, and uh, share with whoever is a stakeholders or even you know like uh, non-design folks as well as design folks and you can share the information more effectively and efficiently so that you know your project intent is communicated well and you can make uh, right decisions or you can get a buy-in sooner from your customers uh, <coughs> or your stakeholders uh, uh, reducing your project delivery time. So, you know, having said that, uh, that is what, you know, like uh, how the, any questions or, you know, do you want any, delve into any more detailed, any of the aspects? Chakri, I'd, I had one suggestion or, or request, if you could. I don't know if you have access to this PowerPoint, but um, there's a video in, in the other PowerPoint that shows the, the usage of the turn arrow functionality on the asset card. Correct. Correct. Can you show that yeah. and explain that, please, because I think folks will be interested in seeing how that now works. Yeah. So this is a, a good thing, uh, Eric, you pointed. Actually, I wanted to show the assets. Uh, intersections, uh, improvement of the intersections and the road traffic, uh, uh, road 
uh, design capabilities is 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 uh, have taken really subtle changes, but they are very profound and and uh, 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 impacting in many ways. So this change, these some of these changes that I'm going to talk are not just limited to the design roads, and some have gone into conceptual roads also. Therefore, uh, you know, many uh, cases uh, would be, so, uh, for example, many cases such as. Uh, uh, cases where you are doing off ramps and on ramps and uh, you are doing urban intersection projects where you have staggered intersections and uh, so on and so forth you know uh, this will impact so uh, here is an example video where I'm showing that uh, a turn arrows uh, can be uh, placed as a property to your road or intersection uh, uh, asset so here you see that this is a three-way uh, three junction, and you got on here uh, coming from the south, you know, what two lanes? One is going left, and one is going right. And uh, having said that, and so is the case on the the road that is coming from the west uh, has, uh, sorry, the road that is coming from the east has one lane that is going through, and the one, one another lane which is going through as well as left turn. So these are this is the property of the uh, lanes at the junction and uh, and uh, and having said that uh, in in infraworks being a an intentional design tool so here what i did is i selected the particular zone um, just run this one to start with it is actually one left and one right and then i selected that particular zone and you see that asset card show up for the junction that uh, that leg and that shows that uh, you have a left lane and right lane in the ui and I'm selecting uh, the left turning lane, and uh, you know changing that as a, as a right turn too. Uh, so, sorry. So just click to the pause. Yeah. So I'm changing that to right turn lane. So at this point, oops, I couldn't pause nicely. Let it go. So I will talk. Oops, I'm sorry. My motor skills are very bad. This is not what I want. This is the one I want. So it's changing. It's changing the uh, travel arrow, and it is not only changing for the viewing purpose. It is actually changing the uh, data behind. Now I'm changing the right side one. So what happened right now is uh, I need to pause this here. Uh, what happened right now by changing that? What is, what I'm doing is I'm not only implying it's making changes to my travel directions and the visual fidelity of the road but actually I'm changing the total property of the road network itself so, and uh, there I will stop perhaps so the median there if I make the the road here as a two through straight and these two lanes are the right only the median here doesn't need to be uh, you know, broken. So program understands that this need, this is going to be through. See, you saw that there. The road is actually the median automatically gets adjusted. So uh, the point here is that it is not just a visual cue that you are seeing. It is the data that is written to the uh, to uh, your uh, to your roadway object, and therefore uh, everything that is associated to that, such as the medians and the lane markings, will adjust. Uh, at the same time, also this information will be passed in to uh, traffic analysis, uh, so that you know when we redo the traffic analysis, it actually does uh, uh, appropriate uh, uh, movements for the traffic, and your reports will be uh, uh, adjusted. You see here, the median is extended, and the stop lines have been removed on uh, on both the east-west roads as soon as I keep changing uh, uh, the tra uh, turn arrows property. Great, thanks, Chakri. Um, another question that came up was about the end treatment of islands. I believe there was some change made to that, where now that they're all squared off, is that is that the case? Uh, the median islands. Yes. Uh, 
Yeah, so just like you're seeing there, shock at the intersection case, you're getting the squared off treatment. So that's a that transition work that went on in rail <coughs> and conceptual roads carries through. Uh, so we're no longer getting the pointy island um, finishes. You should see the squared end treatment. Yeah. Thanks, Nick. Uh, another question that came up was going back to when we talked about the style transitions. The question was specifically whether that capability was available in the IDSP, IDSU version, so the design suite, which would be InfraWorks 360 LT. And um, Chakri or Nick, feel free to add, but um, is my understanding that that feature is only related to planning or GIS roads, not design roads. So um, it would be available in the InfraWorks 360 LT version. And actually, if you had if you had something like that where you can were controlling style or number of lanes on a design road, you would use a style zone or a or a lane zone rather than than that approach. So, just a clarification on yeah. that. Yeah, you you are correct, uh, Eric. Uh, that uh, uh, that that particular feature is available in uh, InfraWorks 360 uh, and uh, uh, and the L360 LT also. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say it is only GIS roads. It's any sketch road within InfraWorks 360 and 360 LT uh, can have that particular functionality, but not exactly the same way for uh, design roads and uh, design design roads. Uh, for design roads, uh, there are well-known workarounds at the moment, and uh, uh, that's where I will leave it there. You see the direction? Yes. We had a couple of questions about, uh, you know, we, you mentioned component roads a bit, Chakri, and I know that's a preview feature, uh, but we had a couple of questions about signage or um, traffic signals at the intersections. I don't know if you can speak to that at all, but um, just folks are curious about that. Uh, uh, for component roads, the traffic signage as a road decoration, correct me if I'm wrong, Nick, uh, as a road decoration is possible at the moment. Uh, uh, right, Nick? Yeah, yeah the, I think the question was more around automatically adding um, things like yield and stop signs uh, at intersections based on the settings in the intersection itself. So that that piece, uh, automated placement isn't there, but as Sharpie said, we can now add various decorations. Uh, via component roads, so um, more to come there for sure, but but no changes currently as far as like automatically placing a stop sign or a or a uh, yield sign based on the settings um, in the intersection. Yes, the data the data exists as you can see the stop signs and uh, uh, the type of the you know whether it is a stop or a or a yield also the data exists in the day in in the object and like Nick said, the automatic placement is not there. That's correct. Another question came up about uh, about the piers, and I, I wish Ara were on the line because I'm sure he can answer this, but it was about um, making a change to the pier geometry. So I'll just read the question. Is it possible to make piers that are not round or square? Often the local bridges are more of a trapezoid on the ends. Um, as I understand, the, the the technology behind the custom, the piers that we have is, is uh, inventor technology. So... The, I guess the capability is there to create custom um, forms for those peers, but I'm not sure of any of the details. Nick or Chakri, do you know uh, any more about that? You are, yeah, you are right that uh, uh, authoring the peers, uh, the technology is available to do uh, like, uh, uh, like the uh, person who asked, actually, to, but uh, today uh, we do not have authoring tool exposed, and uh, it's only parametrically editable for the type of uh, peers that we support. Uh, but have you, you know, like uh, you have seen, uh, you know, it is it is possible, like, and it's in the works uh, at uh, some point of time. Like how you have you are experiencing through the Chameleon project. Uh, Chameleon is a is a labs uh, version of authoring drainage content for InfraWorks and Civil 3D. Uh, which we spoke in the past, and uh, you know, using the same technology, uh, users in future, uh, we are contemplating again labs preview technology, of course, for uh, to begin with. Uh, users will be able to create the kind of shapes using, like Eric said, that uh, you know, inventor-based uh, uh, 
authoring mechanism to create these component parametric components of the choice user wants. Thanks, Chakri. We had a, a couple of questions around the web, the web viewer technology. One is um, to for someone to access one of the shared web views, does does that person have to have an InfraWorks 360 or an Autodesk 360 account? Uh, InfraWorks, no. Okay. And uh, yeah, so you know, by uh, accessing Autodesk 360 is. Uh, do we need Autodesk 360 there? I, I I would say yes. You need an Autodesk 360, but uh, would you? Yeah. Yeah. You so you always need an Autodesk 360 account, 360. Uh, even for a publicly published model. Um, and, and I don't honestly see that limitation going away anytime soon. Um, and it is free. It doesn't cost you anything to have that account. Yeah. Yes. No, it doesn't cost anything. We just need you to log in to the system. And another question was about the the POI uh, functionality working on the iPad app, and I see uh, Nick's answer to this, that it's uh, it's specific to the web view, not the iPad app itself. So uh, for those of you who are curious about that. I also see a question about Android support. Um, the web views are browser-based, and I have actually opened them on my Android phone, so I, I know from experience that they are uh, the web views are able to be viewed on an Android device. Now, the the iPad app specifically views scenarios, which are a specific way of publishing information out of an InfraWorks 360 model. But you can even view those scenarios on an Android device because they're they're browser based as well. So um, there has been, I guess, quote unquote, Android support. I don't know if we officially support it or not, but I do know that I've seen those. Uh, I've seen that viewed on an Android device. We've got lots of questions. This is awesome. So I'm, I'm just sc scanning down through and picking um, picking a couple uh, from the last, the last bit here. There's some questions about customizing the turn arrows and Chakri, as I understand it currently, that, that's not customizable. You kind of get what you get, correct? The display is what you get. Yeah, yes, you're right. Okay. So there's a question on traffic simulation. Is there an analysis that can be completed without using cloud credits, i.e., a smaller area? Uh, at the moment, no. Uh, yeah, you know, it is a it is a uh, cloud consumed only model, and but I take the feedback and uh, we'll discuss with the team. All right, I think uh, I think that'll do it for the questions. Um, I'm going to take back presenter uh, role here, if you don't mind, and just um, talk about a couple of more things before we convene. Um, first, I just wanted to remind everyone that we have in two weeks our walkthrough of traffic simulation coming up. So if you have interest in the traffic simulation functionality that just recently graduated from being a preview to being a fully supported feature, I highly recommend you attend this. And this will get you, the, the goal with this is after you're done with it, you'll be able to, to jump into this feature and use it on your own projects and uh, start running your own analyses and, and making design decisions based on that. So please join us for that and watch for uh, announcements and how to register on uh, some of the sites you see listed, the community site, the InfraWorks 360 forum, as well as our social media, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn um, accounts that we, that we post information on. And just always be checking those areas be, because there's always new stuff uh, coming up. With that, I'd like to, like to thank Chakri and Nick for, uh, for doing a great job passing along this information. And uh, I want to thank everyone who attended, and um, I want you all to have, have a great day. Thanks again.